Alright, today I want to talk about the traffic pattern. Uh, what the traffic pattern is, how to fly one, and a little bit about why we use them in the first place. So, let's say that we get started with a runway. So we're going to start out and we've got a runway uh, something like this. There we go, and we'll put a number on the runway. This would be maybe uh, runway 27, and this would be runway 09er. That's not a 9. Let's try that again. There we go. Runway 09. So we've got runway 27, runway 09. For people who don't know, uh, the number of the runway indicates its magnetic direction. So in this case, if you have runway 27, that means that you are landing on a heading of 270 when your airplane is on the runway. So if you're on runway 27, you're facing 270. Similarly, if you're on runway 9, you're facing 090. So we can get rid of most of that. But that, uh, that represents the numbering system for the runways. Now, the traffic pattern itself. Traffic patterns are fairly simple. There are a rex... excuse me, I almost said rexagon. It's a uh, rectangle, which has several distinct uh, legs. So... I'll go ahead and draw these up here. Uh, there we go. Alright, that represents a traffic pattern, and you would be on the runway at that point right there. So, let's uh, make some labels for these. This right here would be upwind. This right here would be crosswind. Right here is downwind. This one here is base. And this one here is final. So what you've got is you've got the five legs of a traffic pattern. Upwind, crosswind, downwind, base, and final. And the reason that they're called this is because an aircraft uh, will always try to take off and land, if possible, into the wind. So if your aircraft happens to be right here, taking off on runway 27, that's indicating that the wind is coming from 270, or approximately in this direction, somewhere like this. <coughs> the reason that the airplane takes off and lands into the wind is because you get more airflow over the surface of the wing, so essentially you can fly at a slower ground speed while still remaining in the at the same airspeed. For the purposes of this discussion that's not really relevant. All that you have to understand is that when you're taking off or when you're landing, your nose is going to be facing approximately into the wind. What that means is that when you've taken off and you're climbing out, this is where you'll be. And uh, you'll be upwind in the sense that you'll be heading into the wind. You'll be flying forward, the wind will be pushing backward against you. What you're going to do is you're going to take off and you're going to climb in the upwind until you get to a point approximately, uh, for most um, piston engine aircraft, it's a point uh, 300 feet below pattern altitude. For jet aircraft, I assume it would be the same. Uh, Pattern altitude for a reciprocating aircraft is 1,000 feet AGL. For jet aircraft, it's 1,500 AGL. In this case, uh, we're talking about an A-10 Warthog, so we're going to say 1,500 AGL. So in this case, you would climb in the traffic pattern up until 1,200 AGL, and once you're past the uh, departure end of the runway and you're at 1,200 AGL, you can begin your turn out of the upwind and onto the crosswind. Well, what happens now? Well, now your aircraft is in the crosswind, as you can see right there. The wind is still blowing this way. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to crab the airplane slightly outward, something like that, so that your ground track takes you along this route right here. So basically, you're going to have to be flying the airplane in an outward direction so that the wind will blow you back onto this course. The crosswind usually only takes about mm, two to 
five seconds maximum. You don't spend too long in the crosswind. Uh, it's very much a matter of turn crosswind, uh, scan for traffic quickly, and then turn downwind again. So now, let's say that uh, you've just done that. You've turned downwind, you're at about 1500 feet AGL, and here you are. There's your aircraft right there, and uh, you're in a downwind. Again, the wind is at your tail, the wind is speeding you along, so you're going to fly the downwind a bit more quickly, or rather, uh, you're going to fly the downwind at a higher ground speed, the same indicated airspeed, as you do the rest of the pattern. When you reach this point, where your wingtip is a beam... Oh, that's terrible. Let's try that again. There we go. At some point, your wingtip will be exactly parallel to the edge of the runway, the approach end of the runway. At this point, you're considered to be a beam. And what you'll do if you haven't already is at this point you'll call up the control tower and you'll ask for permission to do whatever you're going to do, either whether that be a touch and go or permission to land or permission to do a low approach. <coughs> Next up, you're going to turn base. Right around this point, from the beam and on, you're going to have reduced power, you're going to be descending. So you're descending from pattern altitude downward, you've lowered the gear. If you haven't done that already, so you're descending, you've lowered the gear, and flaps as You're using flaps as necessary in order to enable your descent. What you should also be doing as you turn base is you should also be slowing the airplane down. So whatever your pattern speed was, uh, you should be losing speed on base uh, in preparation for turning final. And as you turn final, you should be fully configured for landing in the sense that you should not need to use any more flaps, you should, not, uh, you should already have the gear deployed and at this point it's just a matter of maintaining a stable glide path down to the runway where you'll round out, flare, and touch down. These are the basic legs of the traffic pattern once again. Upwind, crosswind, downwind, a beam, it's not really a leg, it's more of a point, uh, base, and final. You're climbing during these points uh, actually, that's a lie. You're climbing only during the upwind. You're climbing during the upwind. You're flying um, basically in a crab during the crosswind. You're zooming during the downwind. Right around here at the beam point, you're going to begin your descent, and you're descending through all of this right here. You're descending through the last part of the downwind, you're descending all during the base, and you're descending during the final as well. <coughs> and, uh, that is a simple definition of the traffic pattern.